So welcome to our uh, lab show today. Uh, our research at uh, uh, the UTC focuses on the development of snake robots for helping the uh, inspection and maintenance in industrial environments, like uh, air engine, aircraft wing, uh, telecom tunnels, and uh, nuclear facilities. Very similar to uh, K-hole surgery, it can largely reduce the uh, repair time and cost. So today we are going to present uh, five different snake robots uh, developed in our lab. And the first one is the grandfather snake robots we developed in an EU-funded project about 11 years ago. This robot can take, uh, consists of uh, multiple sections and each of the sections are actuated by uh, four cables and those cables are uh, actuated uh, by the motors in the base of the snake. Because the arm of the snake robot is remotely controlled by cables, so the diameter of the arm can be designed really very small and slant. So this, um, this uh, grandfather snake robots, we built it for evaluate the concept and also find the challenge behind the concept. And after that, we build a, a new version of snake robots, which will be introduced by my colleague, uh, Kalik. Uh, thank you, Erwin. Uh, my name is Kalik Mohammed. I'm uh, assistant professor in mechatronic at Rolls-Royce University Technology Center. And uh, as Erwin mentioned, uh, we have a long journey in uh, learning and developing snake-like robots. So the main challenge with the uh, grandfather uh, snake-like robot, it was the uh, twisting. And uh, this prevents this snake-like robot of holding a large payload. Uh, basically, it cannot do a machining in a, in a confined space with a, with a very basic uh, payload. Uh, so in order to improve the design, uh, we came with this uh, solution, uh, which is, uh, as you can see here, consists of, instead of a single backbone, it includes of a twin uh, backbone here. So the snake body consists of different sections. So each section is driven by uh, three cables in this case. And by manipulating these three cables, you can bend the uh, single section in different direction. So you can have a flexible movement of, uh, of the snake. So as I mentioned, each section is uh, driven by uh, three cables. And here we have eight sections. So in total, we have 24 cables going to the actuation back where we have a uh, 24 uh, motor to control this uh, uh, section individually uh, and simultaneously in the same time. Also, we have additional motor here, which allows this robot to be rotated around itself. And this rotation uh, will allow another advantage of this snake-like robot, which can, uh, which it is ability to be coiled around itself. As you can see uh, in this video here, the robot first was coiled around itself and then start to uncoil and navigate inside this uh, confined space, which in this case, this uh, tube here. And you can see here the, the working channel of the snake-like robot. So you can see it is very flexible. It can navigate in a very confined space and it is not similar to any uh, kind of industrial robot which cannot do this kind of job. So it can avoid any kind of obstacles inside the uh, working environment. Uh, also, we have demonstrated it uh, with different kinds of sensors. So in this demonstration, we, we did it with a Raman sensor. So it can go to a different uh, uh, confined space. And then by using the sensor, we can identify what type of material inside the glove box, for example. Also, we have developed other type of snake-like robot, which is very short. Uh, on the other hand, uh, which is uh, can achieve more accurate positioning of the tip. And at the tip here, we have a, a, a machining tool, which is uh, basically a grinding tool. So the main advantage of this uh, robot is that it can be attached to an engine, and then it can be controlled remotely from Derby. So it uh, reduces the maintenance time. And uh, for example, Rolls-Royce does not need to send any specialized engineer from Derby to the location of the intervention. So after that, we have developed another uh, version of snake-like robot, which is a 12 millimeter uh, diameter, and it can carry uh, like a higher, uh, higher uh, loads 
and uh, Erwin will uh, present this uh, flare snake like robot. Uh, thank you, Karik. Uh, so uh, the next uh, robots I'm going to be presenting uh, has a pair of snake robots. What you are uh, seeing here now is the first snake, uh, which is an inspection uh, snake navigating into the combustor for uh, checking where is the defects in the uh, in the engine. So at the tape of this snake, there are cameras and uh, also ignition tools, which will help the other repair snake for uh, igniting the flame. And after it reach the uh, defect area, the inspection snake will help to ignite the flame from the repair snake. And the flame here is nearly 3,000 degrees C. So the inspection snake needs to move to a safe zone because inside of the inspection snake, there are cameras and also other uh, fragile uh, mechatronic system. And after several rounds of repair, uh, the inspection snake will do a check of the repair quality. So. Now I'm going to hand over to Sam to introduce our latest uh, development. The Continuum robots are used for inspection and repair. Now, traditionally, we will have highly trained engineers to use something called a boroscope to feed inside of a turbine to perform this inspection. Uh, these are basically long, flexible um, optic devices which have a camera at the end, and we have no control over the end of this section. So one of the robots that we've created here is called Cobra. And now Cobra is a long, flexible backbone that we don't have control over, but the end effector has different active sections in which we can control. This is an example of the active section. So we have a series of vertebrae all stacked up on top of each other. And then between these vertebrae, we have a material which is knit and all, which keeps the rigidity. But we can pull on one of these cables and bend it. So we can bend it in two degrees of freedom or four directions. So how do we control this robot? How do we pull on these cables? We actually have a modular base here in which we can bring and put inside of this computer. Um, it will pull, it has spools that wrap around all the cables, and then it will also have motors on the side which will pull, do the pulling of the cables for us. But it, look how compact it is, look how small it is, and we can transport this box wherever we need to. We can understand the direction of the tip, so the tip, the middle, and the base section, and we can also check like status of the system. The robot here is controlled by a joystick. I can move this, cable, this stick up and down, I can feed the robot in and out just by moving it up and down. I can also control the speed of this as well in case I want to do quite precise movements. So that twist and feed mechanism is, is the way of inserting the robot inside of this turbine. And um, it eliminates the need for these engineers to use their hands and move it around. It means we have precise control over that. We also have control over the tip. So I'm going to move the tip. Uh, I'm going to move it back up because we're just, say I want to do a scanning movement. There you go. You see the robot just going in, just going in. And I can move it so I can look around a bit more precisely. So that is our Cobra inspection robot, um, long and flexible much thinner than the other robots that we've uh, presented. I'm going to pass you over to Mohammed. I'm a PhD student here at the University of Nottingham. And I'm currently working on a project with BT. How can we implement this snake robots in inspecting the infrastructure? Uh, supposedly, there are lots of underground ducts full of all the telecom cables. From time to time, they need to do inspection and maintenance on these cables. So we had this idea is to attach a snake robot to the tip of the orange cables that they usually do in inspection, that, so that it would help the orange cable uh, to maneuver between the cables in the underground. We want to have the snake robot be actuated up to a distance of 50 meters. And as you can see here, we are using this uh, mechanical joystick to control the snake robots on the orange cable and guide it between uh, the cable. And then we manually push the orange cable between the telecom cables. The advantage of this is because before you were just doing it manually without any real control on the tip, 
they can sometimes damage the cable or it would be difficult to maneuver. So this is uh, what one, one of the other industrial applications that we are working on. Could these be used and water? Yes, well, um, but the advantage of those uh, snake robot we developed is in the snake body, there is no uh, mechatronic system or there is uh, well, very little mechatronic system. So they can be used for underwater uh, applications. For example, nuclear pumps, we can send this snake, uh, well, the, the arm of the snake into the water and do uh, inspections. So uh, compared with other uh, robots used for underwater, snake has a lot of advantages. For example, underwater robots, there are uh, preparers, so it can uh, get its, uh, its dust from the from the underwater. Uh, but our snake robot can go into the water, and there is no. It will not uh, introduce uh, turbulence into the water, so it can keep the water clean. So it's very good for uh, inspection. If you need to reach positions as far as fifty meters, what's the benefit of having such a long snake robot compared to a wireless robot? If uh, you want to use a wireless robot and send it in, uh, first it is going to have all the actuation pack inside the snake robot, so it's going to be big in size. And here we're talking of a snake robot in a diameter less than two centimeters. So imagine moving all this actuation pack inside a two centimeter diameter. So it's going to difficult, different, uh, going to be difficult. And if you send a wireless robot, there's a chance that you may lose it there. And then in the end, you will have to dig the ground, take out the underground duct to take your robot. So there's a chance that the things that you wanted to avoid ended up in the, doing it again because you're using wireless robot. Which robot could hold the highest payload and what is the length of it? Uh, well, it depends on the robot and the application. Um, out of our robots, the one with the highest payload um, is probably Mirror, um, the one that's used for nuclear, which can hold up to uh, 200 grams in standard conditions. Uh, we can also increase or decrease this payload by changing the tensioning of the cables and uh, making the robot shorter if needed. So please uh, uh, contact us if, if, if you are interested in uh, any further information. And uh, thank you very much. And thank you very much for all of our team who uh, enabled this demo to be having. Thank you, guys.